Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm here to do my March TBR. I'm doing my March TBR with a twist and I think I did this exactly one year ago and also another time last year where my cat chooses my TBR. Last month I mentioned I was doing something special, this is it. And I also asked you all to leave random numbers, which I normally do because I do my random picks. This month I'm doing it a little differently. I had you all choose random numbers. I used those random numbers to pick out duos of books and then I had Tucker choose them. Tucker's not here right now. He's sleeping because he's a cat and that's what they do. Yesterday I had him pick between the books. I gave him lots of treats. He had a good time. Before I get to that, I do want to talk about the other things I'm planning to read as well this month, which include books that I'm currently reading and arcs that I have. I'm also planning to do Becca's Bookopolathon this month, maybe, hopefully, it's in the back of my head. We'll see, but that readathon has challenges that you don't pick the books for until it comes. The actual information for that readathon will be down below. Every month I'm trying to keep track of my TBR for the month, so I'm telling you all how I'm doing on my TBR, and this month my TBR actually grew. It is at 97 books, up from 94 I think it was last month. Yes, it grew. We'll talk about that in a future video. For now, let's do my currently reading. I also will have timestamps down below if you want to just skip to seeing cute videos of Tucker. So I'm currently reading one book, Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I half feel like it took the book world by storm, but also half feel like not that many people are talking about it, but it did just come out last month, so I don't know if I'm overestimating or whatever. I'm almost halfway through this book and we follow a high achieving woman who's starting to feel a little lost in life after she spent the past 10 years getting her PhD in astronomy. And now that she's done, she doesn't really know what to do next. So after a wild night in Vegas where she ends up getting married to a girl she's just met, she has decided to take some time off to get to know her new wife in New York and just figure out what she's doing basically. Like I said, I'm almost halfway through. I'm really enjoying it. The writing style is really beautiful. Next, I have a few arcs that I want to get to slash let everyone know about. I Think I Love You by Ariane de Sombre. This came out on March 2nd, and I got an arc of this via NetGalley from Underline. If you don't know, an arc is an advanced reader's copy, and publishers send them out to book reviewers, booktubers, people who talk about books to, you know, build a hype for books they have coming out. I Think I Love You follows two girls, Emma, a diehard romantic, and Sophia, a more pragmatic girl, and they have to work together on a movie for this film festival, but their movie is kind of dead on arrival because they disagree so much. That is until Emma and Sophia start to see each other in a new light and their rivalry is starting to feel like a rom-com. So sounds like a cute FF romance, which I'm always down for. Noelle the Mean Girl by Ashley Woodfolk. This comes out on March 9th, and I received this from Penguin Teen via NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. This is the third book in the Fly Girl series, which follows a group of girls who go to a performing arts high school in Harlem, New York. And we follow Noelle, whose only priorities are her family, school, and cello. So when her dad loses his job, she doesn't hesitate to work more hours at her grandparents' Chinese restaurant. And seeing her friends and dealing with her ex boyfriend take a back seat to her family's issues and her preparation for the school's fall showcase. But things get even more complicated for Noelle when she realizes she can't stop thinking about Tobin, one of the other five girls. With all of these distractions, Noelle is starting to wonder if all this hard work is even worth it. When We Were Infinite by Kelly Loy Gilbert. This comes out on March 9th again, and this was sent to me from Simon Schuster. Beth is struggling with feeling like she doesn't really fit in with her friends, even though she loves them a lot, and she's also dealing with her family kind of falling apart. When Beth witnesses a private act of violence in one of her friend's homes, her and her group of friends decide to try and rally around that friend to try and protect him. But even when their fierce loyalty isn't enough to stop him from making a life-altering choice, Beth must decide how far she's willing to go for him and how much of herself she's willing to give up. Kelly Lloyd Gilbert wrote one of my favorite books, Picture Us in the Light, which I have right here. And this sounds like it's going to be a similar kind of book dealing with hard topics, but written in a beautiful way that I will hopefully enjoy a lot. So. I'm excited for it. Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. This comes out on March 16th and I got a slightly early copy from Libro FM as part of their influencer program. I don't remember what it's called, but if you're interested in Libro FM, it's a sort of Audible alternative where it's basically the same deal as Audible. I think it's $14.99 a month. You get a credit for an audiobook. You download it, you get to keep it forever. 
and you don't have to support Amazon. So if you're interested, my affiliate link for that will be linked down below. As a biracial unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal, 18 year old Donis Fantaine has never quite fit in. Both in her hometown and on the nearest Ojibwe reservation, Donis dreams of studying medicine, but when her family is struck by tragedy, she decides to stay home to help take care of her mother. The only bright spot for Donis is meeting Jamie, the charming new recruit on her brother's hockey team. Yet, even as Donis falls for him, certain details don't add up and she senses Jamie is hiding something from her. Everything comes to light when Donis witnesses a shocking murder that ends up throwing her into the middle of a criminal investigation. She ends up agreeing to go undercover while secretly pursuing her own investigation, tracking down the criminals with her knowledge of chemistry and traditional medicine. But the deceptions and the death keep piling up and soon the threat strikes too close to home. Those are all the arcs that I wanted to mention in this video. If you're interested in any of them, check them out. They all come out this month or came out this month and it's always fun to support authors during their debut month, debut time, etc. So now we're on to the pairings of books for my cat to choose between. The first difficult choice Tucker will have to make is between This Is Major by Shayla Lawson and Becoming by Michelle Obama. This has appeared in many a TBR. <laughs> So as you can see, Tucker chose This Is Major by Shayla Lawson. This is an essay collection where Lawson sheds light on the many ways that Black femininity has influenced mainstream culture using a unique mix of personal stories, pop culture observations, and insights into politics and history. So it seems like it'll be a fun read. I am excited to read it. Thanks for picking it, Tucker. Next we have Little Family by Ishmael B. And then Save the Date by Morgan Matson. Tucker chose Little Family by Ishmael Bea. The synopsis of this felt a little confusing for me because I didn't quite understand it if I'm being totally honest, but it seems to follow five people who end up making their own little home out of an abandoned airplane, which is a relic of their country's loss. And one of them ends up being caught under the spell of the beautiful people, the fortunate sons and daughters of the powerful. And for that person, the desire to resume an interrupted coming of age and follow her own destiny proves impossible to resist. So I think it's about the group of people dealing with that. I'm not really sure why they're in an abandoned airplane. I assume we'll find out. Uh, this author is apparently pretty well known. He's also the author of A Long Way Gone, which has been published in more than 40 languages. That's kind of all I know. This wasn't an arc said to me, even though this is an advanced reader's copy, just in case you were wondering. And that's why I don't know too much about it, but it is on my shelf, so I wanna give it a shot. <laughs> Vicious by V.E. Schwab and Just Breathe by Cami McGovern. <laughs> Tucker chose Vicious, which I feel like everyone and their mother knows the synopsis of. This follows two guys who decide to research near-death experiences and through that end up developing extraordinary abilities. And this picks up like 10 years after that, I think it's told in like a back and forth from their time in college to the future. And one of them is in jail and I think one of them is trying to kill the other one. Maybe the person who's in jail is trying to kill the one that's not in jail, I don't know. So I've somehow managed to go however many years this book has been popular in booktube without knowing too, too much about it because it sounds interesting to me. And I do think I could really like this. V. E. Schwab has been kind of hit or miss for me, not hit or miss for me, but they're, I guess I haven't re really read enough of her books to really decide, but this does sound like one of the ones that I could really enjoy. Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and What We Saw by Erin Hartzler. <laughs> The Chosen Book, Second Chance Summer. This is one of the Morgan Manson books that I need to read. It's been on my shelf for quite a long time. We follow a girl after her father receives some horrible news. And so they decide to spend one last summer at their summer house. And our main character has to confront things she left behind there. The Girl From Everywhere versus These Shallow Graves by Jennifer Donnelly. <laughs> The Girl From Everywhere won this round. This follows Nyx, 
who has spent her entire life aboard her father's ship, sailing across the centuries and across the world, across myth and imagination. And as long as her father has a map for it, then they can go there. So he can sail to any time, any imagined place, as long as he has a map for it. However, her father is obsessed with one map that could take him back to his lost love, Nyx's mother. But if they get it and go there, it could mean that Nyx's existence is erased. So for the first time, Nyx is entering unknown waters. She could find herself, find her family, find her own fantastical ability, her own epic love, or she could disappear. And I believe this is the first book in a duology. This has been on my radar on my TBR for a long, long time. It sounds very interesting. I'm not a huge fan of time travel, which is why I have left it so long. Actively dislike time travel, I should say. So that part of the book is probably not gonna work for me that well, but it does sound interesting. So I'm willing to give it a shot. And the last pairing is Something Happened to Allie Greenleaf versus First Life by Jada Shell Walter. Tucker for the finale chose First Life. This takes place in a world where people have two lives basically. First Life, which I think is like our lives right now, and then Everlife, which is where life really begins, I guess. I don't know. It happens after First Life. And in Everlife, there are two realms that have all the power and you have to choose which realm to go into during your first life. I th believe it is the person's parents who chooses where they go, but our main character has decided that she won't let her parents choose and because of this she has been imprisoned and we follow her as both the realms in power in Everlife try to get her to join their side and that's kind of all I got from this. I actually, multiple years ago, maybe the last time I did the try a chapter tag, I read this book during it because I was thinking about unhauling it and I actually enjoyed it. And I thought I was gonna get to it pretty soon because I'm on chapter two, I saved where I stopped during the try a chapter tag and then I never got back to it. So hopefully I'll be getting back to it this month and hopefully enjoying it. It sounds kind of like a fun romp, that's why I was enjoying it. Like this seems like older YA, which I've been enjoying lately. So those are all the books that Tucker chose for me to read this month. I have a few more books that I would like to read this month, but I'm only gonna pull out two. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of these books. It's always a toss up, you know how I am. Or if you don't, that's how I am. I just do what I want. So two more books that I'm definitely planning to read this month or reread I should say are Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom both by Lee Bardugo. Yay, I'm doing a reread of the entire Grishaverse and I should have at least my Shadow and Bone vlog up by now. I finished rereading that trilogy and I'm planning to release vlogs of my reread for your enjoyment to commiserate with me. I had a good time doing it. Hopefully you enjoy it. The first one will be linked down below and maybe the second one if that's up by now, I don't know. So I would like to continue. I'm planning to do a singular vlog for these books, planning a special thing. I plan to be done with the entire series this month, but it's not gonna happen. I don't need to read Rule of Wolves on release day. It's, I'll be fine. But yes, I'm planning to read these two books this month. And then everything else I read will be up in the area. You'll find out in my wrap up for March, which will hopefully come out in April. Unlike my wrap up for January, which didn't come out in February, uh, it'll be coming out soon. I promise, okay? I think that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments down below, leave me a four leaf clover emoji or any green emoji. I'm wearing lots of green because March is a green month. Also let me know a book you're looking forward to reading in the month of March. And thanks again so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I post a video. Next to me are a few videos that you might enjoy of mine if you're interested in continuing to watch. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.